Santi Summers. I'm a contemporary ceramic artist. I work very sculpturally hand building with ceramic and then introducing other materials and doing it to it depending on what I'm creating. The way I use colour is kind of, or all these pieces are quite satirical and they're quite um, mocking. So they, uh, the colour choice is to kind of mock the idea of African primitivism and African exoticism. So by trying to challenge that and remake pieces that kind of reference these colonial relics, the pieces are very bright, very bold, but they're meant to be satirical, uh, but exaggerated, larger scale, but they are still functional. So you're trying to play between that idea of looking at something and thinking, gosh, you know, like when you walked in, you're like, oh, it's fun, you know, there's brightness. But then I want a subtle undertone of a slightly deeper kind of call to action or call to reformation where you read the text and suddenly think, oh, sheesh, that's not actually as lighthearted as I imagined. So the text written is mostly borrowing quotes from post-colonial thinkers. Because this exhibition is, about, is supposed to be a conversation with the Big Falls, I started looking at the hotels and how they have, you know, they've got paintings of unnamed tribesmen painted by white men naked on the wall and they're still there and there's you know David Livingston's sculpture discovering the falls still there and then you've got like all these relics of oppression on pedestals in hotel foyers and whatnot so all those shapes and all those things I'm trying to reference um, so I found in images that I've collected so you know the oval mirror or the kind of dome-shaped uh, lamp that's kind of, you know, used to have fringes and all of that kind of thing and the archway shapes are all very, you know, they're seen in like the Victoria Falls Hotel and all those old places that are now sold as colonial grandeur and I think to me it's super interesting that, you know, this history of oppression and exploitation is now sold as a luxury brand. So I think that's what I'm trying to force people to consider. That's one history, I'm not saying we need to rewrite that history, but there's so many other stories, so many other ways to depict it. There's contemporary Zimbabwe, there's exciting things happening. You know, there's so many dynamic ways and dynamic things happening. I did a tiny bit of it at university because I loved it, the kind of materiality of it, and it's so expressive. And, you know, there's so much about taking something, you know, mud out of the ground and then you get to produce anything really. It's so versatile. So I, well, I went to art school, so I did that a little bit at university. And then when I moved to London, I did it, I became part of a shared studio and just did it more as a hobby, but just realized that I absolutely loved it. So then opened up my studio, bought my first kiln and haven't looked back since. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much self-taught, so it's probably not the, the proper way to do it, but I'll tell you how I do it. Um, <clears throat> so I've got, you get your clay and I make a kind of lots of sausage roll shaped pieces and I coil and hand build like that. So it's very basic, but you can do so much with it. And then I have a heat gun to try and keep the position. And then it's, it's, it's very time consuming and laborious work, but it's therapeutic in that. And it really gives you time to think about what you're doing. But then it's also such a lovely process of care because you have to smooth it out and you, you know, get your sponge and you wash it and you do all that. So it's really, um, you have to be completely involved. You know, you get dirty, it's wet, it's muddy, or it's just playing with mud all day, which is great. And then you've got to leave that to dry completely. And then you chuck it in the kiln, don't chuck it, it's very fragile. Put it in the kiln very carefully. And then you bisque fire it, so that's the first process, so about, to about 900 degrees. And then once that's cool, it's, if I'm using white stoneware, which I mostly do, it comes out just plain white. And um, then you can paint it, glaze it, and then you put it back in the kiln for a second firing. And then you have your piece. I mean, there's a lot of variation. I sometimes fire my pieces several more times to get different colors or different techniques, but that's the basic um, basic idea. I quite like the idea of, you know, the everyday object, object that is functional. I think there's quite a lot of space to be artistic within that realm, so I quite like it. So I do tend to try and create artworks out of functional pieces because then you are talking about these everyday objects because all these issues are kind of these invisible ghosts or invisible problems that aren't addressed. So I think by addressing the everyday, everyday objects, you can add quite a lot of commentary through that. So I do like, I do the lamps, the mirrors, vessels, all the vessels hold water and work as, you know, a classical vase would, but obviously they are, um, you know, 
very different. Um, all the lamps work and everything like that. So it's just it's working on the kind of traditional concepts of these uh, objects and then trying to transform them. The vase is such a you know it's you know it's got such a long history that it's got such a lot to speak about um, containment and vessel and holding and what it's holding, and what message it's carrying. So there's so much in that. I think because I've got a fine art background, I definitely don't get my inspiration just from ceramicists, but lots of sculptors, lots of kind of you know, there's so much crossover between sculpture, painting, all of it. Anything, you know, so much gives you inspiration. Definitely sketch something out, but that's kind of, you know, the blue, it's just an idea. It doesn't really stick to that. I mean, it's so dependent on the day, the weather, how quickly things dry, how much time you have to how the form is created. So, you know, you, you definitely can draw what you want it to look like, but it's, you know, it's very, well, in my case, it changes a lot as the process carries on. It's got its own own way of, you know, telling you what to do. These, these drawings are all kind of blind drawings. So that piece in particular was, I created a sculpture, one of those little ones, this was years ago though. And then I did a blind drawing, just feeling and drawing that. So it's quite a nice, you know, way to get into the tactile materiality, a way of creating just to, you know, get yourself stimulated while you're thinking about what you want to make. So the show coming up that I'm creating all this body of work for is for First Floor Gallery in the Vic Falls Gallery and it's called a Vocabulary for Ghosts, Challenging Colonial Relics within the kind of Victoria Falls setting and trying to reimagine colonial grandeur. So the opening is next Saturday in Vic Falls. See you there.